seeing the people quit and seeing the people that were not gonna be stopped. I think at that moment, for the most part, you saw the people that were in it for, for the long run. And like, we all made eye contact with each other mm -hmm. that like, this shit is miserable, terrible. It, it hurts, <laughs> it sucks. And uh, we all just kept kept getting after it and we all kept going. And um, and that that was a special moment because we all, that, that was the first time we, we showed up in, as individuals. I'm sure we all made eye contact with each other and we, we reformed that bond of like, like these are my brothers, these are, this is, this is why we're here. Hey, what's up? I'm Steve Eckert, United States Marine entrepreneur and instructor of The Project. Welcome to The Project Show. This is a show for men in search of meaningful transformations in what we call the four F-bombs, the family, the fitness, the finances, and the faith. And this occurs through emotional, physical, and mental hardship and sacrifice so that you can become even better husbands, fathers, leaders, entrepreneurs, and men. Today on this episode, I wanna invite a special guest, Julian Serrano, thanks for coming by. Awesome to have you here. Thank you, Julian, sir. can you just introduce yourself to the audience, where you're from, what you do? So my name is Julian Serrano. Um, I'm a firefighter paramedic from South Florida. And um, and here I am. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks for coming. So Julian was a graduate of the Project Class 005. So we're going to talk about his experience, some of the highs and lows, and how things went with that, and get into some of the fun stuff. So let's let's just jump right into it. Julian, when you first saw the project online, you probably saw some videos, some some read some articles on it, whatever it was on social media. What was it that that stood out that just grabbed you and you resonated with where you said, you know what, this is something I need at this point in my life. Like right now I need to become a part of this. What was it that really grabbed you? It had to be the, the suffering, the the suffering together uh, with with other men that, that wanted to be better men. And they were all suffering to get to that point. Um, on, on the other side of suffering is greatness, but you have to suffer. And um, uh, the cold water, um, the hikes, um, the, the running, um, all that stuff, you know, it just intrigued me into, into seeing, you know, all these guys suffering together. And I didn't see the other side, obviously, that's why I came to the project, because I wanted to see what the awesome. outcome was. So looking for suffering, looking for some pain and that's some it. sacrifice, that's good stuff. Why did you feel you needed to go through some suffering? What struggles were you going through at the time? What were you looking to achieve out of this? I've had a good life, but I've, I've always wanted to be a better, um, a, a team person, a better leader uh, with my family, um, a better uh, manager with, uh, with my time and my money. <clears throat> and I'm not essentially the, the best at that. Um, I'm a great uh, person when it comes to uh, athletic ability and, um, and, and, and working out, but there's more to life than fitness. And we, you have to have an overall well-rounded uh, wheel as they say, because if you have one spoke that's that's off, it's gonna be a rough ride. Mm. So, so that's why I wanted to come to the project. Really, is, is just for that main reason. Awesome. Were there any struggles you were going through at the time that you felt you need to overcome, or any roadblocks in your way to get to the next level that you were looking to get to? Oh uh, well, um, you know, the, the biggest roadblock would have had to be. It's not about me. It's about we mentality, uh, which is really important if you want to be successful in any aspect of life. Um, at the end of the day, it. it it's, it's not all about you. And um, in, the, the sooner you realize that, um, the sooner that your why on everything you do is more important. And um, I feel like you'll be more and successful. as a firefighter in paramedics, that's something you need to live by. Like Absolutely. literally, if you're not, if you're thinking about yourself for a split second, that could right. cost lives, literally 100%. cost lives. Like it's yep. a life or death situation to think of the team and the, and the mission over yourself. Absolutely, so th that's that's a great point. If If I'm watching your back, you're watching my back, and, and then if, if somebody else is watching all of our backs, we've got three eyes mm -hmm. instead of one person just watching their own back. And, and that's one thing that, that I was instilled. Um, but, but it's tough. It's tough. Um, it's tough always remembering that, you know, it's not about me. It's about we. We're here for the team. And as a team, we can succeed at anything. So and that correlates into uh, family, into uh, uh, finance, into to business, into, into everything. Everything. So once it. you saw this, you knew this was going to be something for you. You knew this was going to be something to help you further your leadership skills and, and your teamwork abilities in your own personal and professional life. Did you, did you have any hesitations about actually getting registered and getting started? Do you have any kind of fears or Absol doubts? Or? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, you know, the, the doubt of what if I don't make it? Uh, I'll be honest, that's that's always crossed my mind. Um, I think the difference of... And you've been through some some 
rough shit. You put yourself through, and you still had the doubt of what if I don't make this? What if I can't hack it? Right. Because we'll get men all the time that say, "I'm not a quitter. It's not my DNA." But that's 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 cute. They're full of shit. They're full of shit because every one of us, and I'm not afraid. We've thought about. We haven't done it, but we've thought about quitting at certain things. We thought we can't hack it. We thought we're not good enough. Right. Because any man that says, oh, it's just not in my DNA. I know right off the bat, that's going to be the first the first motherfucker to ring the bell right there. Yep. Someone Absolutely. that talks like that. Absolutely. So that's the thing. We can't control uh, our thoughts. We can control our actions. So when, when it gets dark in, in, in your mind and whatever you're going through in life, um, you know, you, you got to press forward and you have to remember that nothing lasts forever, good or bad. And, um, and, and so it actually at my life, at that time, I was in a good good part of my life, and um, I wanted to see really what I was made of, and that was the the sole purpose of me coming out here and, and joining this program is to see, you know, I, I feel like if you're not constantly under fire, um, you you know you, you get complacent, you get sedentary, you get soft, and uh, and so th- so that was the main reason um, for for the for joining the project. Awesome. Yeah, we have a saying in the in the military. I'm sure you heard it. Complacency kills. Absolutely. And literally, in your profession, complacency will literally call, call someone to call someone to die. So Absolutely. it makes perfect perfect sense. So let me ask you: during the experience, there was some some fun stuff, some crazy stuff. What was your <laughs> your least favorite either evolution or event or, or or drill that we had to do? What was your what stands out as your least favorite? Uh, well. My least favorite would have to be the ice bath. Um, so I'm from sunny South Florida, and when you wake up in California in the summertime, it's like 60, 55 degrees, which is a winter day in South Florida. So uh, waking up cold and then knowing it's going to get colder was uh, was tough to, to swallow. But you know, like I just said, like anything, um, nothing lasts forever. Uh, pain really is temporary. Um, you just have to realize that it, it will end. And um, but that was my my biggest biggest fear was that was that ice and um and it's you know with with Aaron helping us with breath work and us conquering that fear of just doing it you know it it, it turned into it wasn't as bad as as the mind portrayed it to be and so it was something you had ahead of time you were having that fear even after you got registered that was something like another thing you're having some fear and some doubt Absolutely. about right and and you're not afraid to say that you had that like no men that's a problem with men nowadays they think that if they Say they had fear, they show any vulnerability, or they show any doubt. They think it makes them a pussy or a soft or weak. Right. I um, think not not being truthful about that is what makes you a pussy and absolutely. soft and weak. Absolutely, you're not Billy really badass because you're pretending that you're no. just un- unbreakable and un- invincible. Because it's, it's we all have our fears, our doubts, our frustrations where we we question ourselves. So I appreciate you sharing that and and being truthful about it because yeah, too many too many men and that's what the project exposes in a lot of men. Right, those Billy badasses are the. The bell ringers usually. Yeah, absolutely. Good stuff. So when when things got tough, and it's interesting that that was your least favorite, Christopher. For some people, that's their favorite. It's so crazy how everyone is different, and that's what makes up a team. That's what right. makes up like think about it, of the in the project, the, the brotherhood. There's everyone has their strengths or weaknesses. Same thing in, in there. I'm sure in in your in fire team. Yeah, absolutely. Different strengths and weaknesses you could rely you could rely on. There were guys who jumped into the ice bath. There was a, a Nordic guy from I forget where he's from, like Switzerland or something. He jumped in there. It was like a regular bath, but he was like a right. joke for him. A joke. Like, <laughs> when yeah. are you gonna put in the ice? And it's like 30 degrees. So yeah, everyone true. has a strength and weaknesses. So that that's awesome. So what what was your go to trigger at moments during the project or just in life when you're starting to think I don't have what it takes? I can't do this. I'm gonna fail. I'm gonna quit. What what makes you what made you not quit during the project? What was your go to in your head? your your trigger to make you not quit man it's it's crazy because during the project you you lose sense of time you don't know you know how long you've been there you have an idea that's because you're having so much fun and we're having parties and right. there's strippers and yeah. there's fucking beer and all, there's foot rubs every 10 the, minutes that's why you lose track of time you're just having a fucking blast all the good time and you know honestly even you know i've been through some tough stuff i'm not i'm not bragging by any means but in the project i had to dial in mentally to just be where my feet are and be present of like, just move forward. Um, that's what I solely focused on. Um, I, I've gotten a pretty good grasp on mentally locking into what's going on and not worrying about the ice bath because I hadn't got to the ice bath yet. That was a, a big fear of mine, but I hadn't mm-hmm. got there yet. And I'm like, if I worry about that, I'm not gonna get there because I'm not focused on what's going mm-hmm. on right now. And so when it got super tough, because it fucking did, it got dark, and I'm like, man, I don't want to fucking be here, I want to go home. But I said, you're here for a reason, and like I said to you earlier, nothing lasts forever. Just just suck it up and 
just press forward, just one foot in front of the other, or one lunge, one push up, one bear crawl, one low crawl, a lot of low crawls, <laughs> and um, and that's that's basically it. So awesome, awesome stuff. So what was one of your favorite things, favorite evolutions, favorite events that we went through? So we did the hike with the uh, the little pig. Um, that's not so little. And all the equipment that we- The little we, pig. The, the, the twig, twig. The twig. The twig. I was like, who the fuck was the pig? I don't even remember. All right, got it. The, the twig. twig. The twig. Yeah, Whatever like, the stupid name it was. It's just a little stick that they carry. It's like this little tree branch. It's nothing. Yeah, it's nothing. So that was awesome because at first there was a lot of individuals and we, we soon realized that we're not going to complete this evolution unless we work together and we work efficiently and effectively and, and we move with a purpose because um, we don't want to be on that on that hill all day. And that was honestly my favorite. It was hard, it was long, it was it was never ending. And then we almost did it again, um, which was, was, I was ready for it. As soon as you know you said, do it again, I, it didn't even, I had, I, 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 during that, that hill climb was the time where I had to switch and it was just like, I'm, I'm ready to do whatever. It doesn't Everyone's matter. got that moment, and that's always my favorite moment for each individual is that at one point, you flip the switch. Like, at that point, nothing can stop you. Nothing right. can break you. It doesn't Absolutely. matter. Like, what more could you do to me? I'm already here. There's nothing. And that, that's awesome that that was your, your, where you flipped the switch. And you guys were actually screwed because when you, we lined up for the first hill because you're carrying, you were carrying a, a several pieces of, of gear, and then one guy just thought just the thought of going on this hill carrying this stuff if you remember he quit right before he, was, he started he was holding one of the pieces of equipment with me yeah i remember he literally put it down and walked away and rang the bell right there so yeah. you guys got fucked because you then had to carry his load and i think it may or may not have upset me i don't remember because i blank out sometimes that i'm even added more stuff for you to carry than you were even supposed to carry with him so you Absolutely. had his stuff plus additional so you had to figure out and that, that was the ultimate teamwork and it yep. took it took you guys a while to figure it out but you you figured out how to be efficient and make it happen and it took a while it was brutal but you, you figured out so that was a, that was an awesome that one stands out to me as like one of the highlights break get, getting through that event yeah. that you guys did that was Absolutely. awesome yeah there was a there's a lot of stuff during the class that was you had to focus on yourself but there was also a lot of stuff that we had to work together it didn't matter who was strong who was fast who could run the farthest like none of that matters. All that mattered was we worked together to c complete the mission, and and that was that was why it was my favorite. So and everyone's got their strength and weeks is figuring out who would be better where and not having any like subduing your fucking ego. Like right. there's no time for ego. There's no time for no. emotions out there because if you do, the entire team's gonna fucking fail. Absolutely. Awesome. So before we get to the next one, I want you to I want you to just think of. You know, in the Marine Corps, we always have suffering. And, and, but afterwards, we'd sit around. Like, if you remember the graduation dinner ceremony that we have, the whole time, all we're doing is is laughing about some of the crazy shit that happened. Absolutely. So I want you to think of, and before we do that, I'm going to tell you something uh, during your class. I want you to think of uh, uh, an experience there that afterwards you're thinking, you know, that, that was some good shit or that was just some funny shit. But I want to let you know how, or you probably do know, because we were doing a, a crawl one time, uh, I think with a sledgehammer. I don't remember exactly what we were doing. And there's cameraman around, right? Because we're getting tons of footage. And you looked up at the camera actually twice. And the cameraman caught you smiling and like throwing up a peace sign or like a thumbs up or something, smiling at the camera. And no one ever would have known about it. So I just want you to know that the re... And then you, you may or may not have gotten punished and tortured. And everyone got tortured for that, for you doing that. But the only reason we knew about that is because the guy behind the camera right now, Ed, he's, he came up to me, pulled me aside, like interrupted the entire project, said, hey, Steve, I'm going to check this out, and showed me the pictures of you smiling on the camera that he caught when you were down there. So you and Ed could have a conversation when we're done with this because he caused several hours of, of oh, suffering, suffering and torture for you. Awesome. Yeah, it was, uh, it was honestly a way of, uh, of, of getting out of my own head, and that was just the beginning. Um, it was a selfish moment. Um, you know, it was about me at that time of like just – you know, taking myself away from the pain when you just have to accept the pain and you have to realize that with pain comes growth and <clears throat> no matter how bad it is, um, smiling or not smiling, one thing I've, I've come to learn is you always have to maintain your composure and keep, maintain your bearing and keep, keep yourself always in check emotionally and physically. Um, no matter what is going on, your, your attitude or emotion shouldn't change. If it's bad, it should be the same. If it's good, it should be the same. And, and that's probably the biggest thing I learned from that. Actually, that was a huge lesson for me. And in hindsight, like, we look at it and I'm like, you know what? I fucking love that picture. I love it. I go back and I look at it like you're just 
enjoying the suck, like embracing the fucking suck. And that's right. what it was. So in the moment, like, yeah, it's exactly what you're saying, but that's what I'm saying. Afterwards, after the suffering, you're like, that's fucking awesome. Like yeah. that you can get to that frame where you even make the hard shit fun. That's what yeah. life is all about. Absolutely. Seeking out hard shit and finding a way to make it normal, making oh, it fun right. so that you can find a whole new level of hard shit that right. sucks until you can make it fun and then just keep going and progressing yeah, in life. So I lo- we love, I love that picture. I loved yeah, it. I, I loved it. And it was funny because like before I, I, I did that, I literally said out loud, I'm like, I paid for this shit. Like I, I, I paid to fucking be here. So like I, I wanted to make the best, the best mm-hmm. of it. And I think, you know, uh, fatigue makes a coward out of all of us. And when we suffer, we forget everything that's important because like any human, the human doesn't want to suffer. They want to be cozy, comfy, and just have an easy, mm-hmm. easy life. And, uh, and that's, not, that's not what this is. And that's, that's why I came, so. Yeah, but as we looked at it afterwards, the instructors were looking at it, we're like, you know what? I fucking like that shit that, that you did. Like, it reminded me of a time in, in, book, in Marine Corps boot camp. We were doing pewter sticks, and you're in a pit. You were up all night. You didn't sleep for like two days. You didn't eat for days, and then they make you fight each other because you're just out for <laughs> out for blood. And we're, you're going at it. The guy's on the ground. I'm, I'm fucking hitting them, hitting them, and they're supposed to pull you off, but I don't know what's going on. It's like two on one and two on You're all the chaos. You're just hitting anything in sight. And I'm fucking smashing the guy. He's done. He's out. He's on the floor. They pull me off, the, whoever's like, the, the drill instructors pull me off. Wait, what the fuck's wrong with you? What are you doing? And the drill instructor pulls me aside as he drags me out of the out of the cage. And it's like, that's some good shit. And the first time they had some actual human interaction, it gives me a fist bump in the middle of boot camp because that's, and awesome. that's kind of how we saw that. Like, right. should it be done? Maybe not. Is it fucked up? Maybe is it the wrong mind frame? Maybe <laughs> not, but some good shit. <laughs> that's the way we look at yeah, it. Awesome. So yeah. good stuff. So are there any, any stories, anything that comes to mind, like similar to that for you during your experience during the project that kind of stands out that afterwards you're looking at and you're like you know what that that's some good shit or that was that was some funny thing to happen or um it definitely had to be the low crawl the low crawl um just seeing seeing the people quit and seeing the people that were not going to be stopped i think at that moment for the most part you saw the people that that were in it for for the long run and like we all made eye contact with each other Mm -hmm. that like this shit is miserable terrible it it hurts (laughs) it sucks and uh we all just kept kept getting after and we all kept going and um and that that was a special moment because we all that that was the first time we, we showed up in, as individuals i'm sure we all made eye contact with each other and we we formed that bond of like like these are my brothers these are this is this is why we're here that's awesome how it works right yeah. with, at the worst possible times of the greatest amount of suffering and all it takes is some eye contact like we're fuck, we have a bond now, like just from just from going through the suck together, from experiencing this this pain and, and sacrifice together. That's some that's some good stuff. That's some deep Absolutely. stuff. That's good stuff. Yeah. So now let's let's go to graduation. You graduated. You get home. Day one. What were some of the immediate effects that you had? Some immediate of the positive effects you had that you literally can implement and make changes in, like right away, like not having to. Some things are going to take time to develop, but what were right. some things that immediately affected you as you returned home? <clears throat> uh, I'd have to say the leadership aspect um uh, was immediately applied to to every aspect of my life um you you have to step up and lead um but before you step up and lead and what i mean by it it was immediately applied it was applied to myself it was applied to like i said the finance the fitness the faith and, and to my family but how i responded reacted and initiated anything was um you know if i want a certain outcome i need to represent myself with that Mm-hmm. outcome first before I expect it from anybody else. So whether it was at the fire department, um, whatever the case may be on a call, somebody didn't do something, I did it instead. Um, whether it was at home or, or, or you know, uh, at the gym and whatever the case may be, I, I always initiated the, the leadership of like, don't expect others to do something, just do it yourself and, and, and others will follow in eventually. So, so the leadership aspect of, of the lessons I learned from, from the instructors from the project is, is what I immediately applied to my life. Um, everything else is, is compounding, like we talk about um, after the project is only the beginning. So you have to realize that you're not gonna climb the mountain in a day, but you have to keep climbing mm-hmm. to, to gain progress. And so what were some of the now now it's a few months later and you're actually here to be a junior instructor to help out those guys coming in what are some of the other things that have have, have happened over that time that you've developed over the time the last couple months that have had an impact on your life either professionally personally in your relationships so uh so two things uh accountability 
and, uh, and teamwork. Um, so you guys held us accountable for everything and anything in the class. And um, what I mean by that, I'll elaborate a little bit, is um, you have to own and take responsibility for what's going on. You can't place blame on other people. And no matter what, what happens, it's ultimately your fault, whether you like it or not. So that was number one. And then the teamwork aspect of, you know, I really poured into that with my family and, and my, my, my faith and, and with the fire department family as well of just, um, you know, making, it doesn't matter how good Julian Serrano is, if I'm not making other people better, then it doesn't matter. Like the, the great leadership quality of somebody is making the team better. Like LeBron James or Michael Jordan, um, they're great players, but the players that they're with, you know, they, they come off the bench and you're like, who is this guy? And it's because of these star players that mm -hmm. they come off the bench and they become who they are because they bring the best qualities out of the people. So um, that's probably the, the, the two things that, that have compounded. And it, it's constant growth, man. It's just, it's, it's gaining the momentum and just continuing it every day, every day. And, and people slip, humans slip, you fall off track a little bit, but you need to realize, just like you maintain your bearing, um, that when you go up too high, you gotta come back. And then mm -hmm. if you come down low, you gotta come back up to the middle. You always wanna stay in the middle. And, and so that's, that's the So what you're saying is one of the, and, and same thing in the military, in the Marine Corps, was one of the number one responsibilities of a leader is to create future leaders. And, and you can't do that if you're not sharing all that information, like those right. traits and skills you have, if you just have them up here and you're just using them yourself and not really teaching them to anyone else, you're just holding all that fucking knowledge hostage in your head, pretty right. much, just prisoner in your head. And it's not even knowledge until you let it out. Just you having it alone, is, to me, is not even knowledge until you share it. And that's the same thing, kind of like what you're saying with leadership, that yep, absolutely. You can't, you're not even a leader until you're developing future leaders, because that's where the force multiplier comes in. Imagine that in the fire, fire department, if you can create 10 leaders on your squad rather than you just being a leader and leading everyone but also create a bunch of leaders a bunch of a mini you absolutely that, that can lead now you, now you're un, unstoppable that's it's, like it's, that's the force multiply you could take on you could take those 10 guys and, and take on jobs that would normally take 100 guys because now you have a bunch of leaders so that's an awesome point yeah and that's that's you just said the word the key word the special program we talked about behind the scenes um in the fire department world is the end of the day goal is obviously you graduate but we be they create us or they they make us force multipliers so mm -hmm. when we go back to our departments we make everybody better when we show up whether it's a fire a medical call or a training or just a regular shift another day at, at the fire department the people that work with us that day are going to be better because we're there and we're going to make sure that we maintain the standard and we uh we represent the standard that we maintain at, at all costs. So I always say it's like cheating. Like in the Marine Corps, we were cheating. And in my businesses, it's like we were cheating because everyone else is worried about having a leader that everyone just follows. Right. In the Marine Corps, like literally from day one, you're forced to be a leader. You're taught to be a leader. You're trained to be a leader. So it, it's cheating because now you have this force that can take a, a tiny little force that could take on massive, massive armies because of exactly what you're saying, that, that force multiplier. So that, that's, some, that's some good stuff. So what has it meant to you to be part of this part of the brotherhood here? Oh, uh, it's, it's, of the project. you know, I had, I had a, I have a brotherhood in the fire department. Um, and it's more, I'd have to say, because in the project, whether you graduated together or you were two classes behind me or two classes ahead, there's always that mutual respect and love for men that s sought out suffering and made it to the other side. They didn't quit. Um, they, they, they saw it through. And, and that's, that's what this program is for, is, is teaching men to see hard shit through, to realize that there's greatness on the other side of, of anything hard you do in life. Speaking of hard shit, what, is, what you were telling me behind the camera, what are some of the other things you've done? Like some of the crazy shit, hard um, shit you've so, saw out in your life? So a, a few months ago, I ran 100 miles in 23 hours. And um, uh, I did this uh, special operations program called Florida Smoke Divers. Um, we started with 22 dudes and we finished with six. Wow. Um, so it, it's, it's got a high fail rate. Um, but the run, it took 23 and a half hours. I didn't sleep. Um, you know, I, I think I took a two to three minute break every seven miles. And, um, you know, that was, that was tough. But um, out of, out of the, the six day program that I took, the 23 hour run that I did, and this program, they're all up there on uh, emotion, spiritual, and, and physicality-wise of pushing the, the human body to the max and, and seeing what you're made of, seeing like what's gonna happen when it gets dark. Everybody can make a sound decision when it's sunny and 75. 
But mm -hmm. when you're on an, when you're on a boat in the middle of the ocean during a hurricane, where does your mind go? You know, do you, are you going to get scared? Exactly it. it turns to your mind. Like the body part is easy, right? The physical part is the easy part because you can either can do it or you can't. It's right. mentally and emotionally is where where the real growth and development and transformation and or breakdown happens. Right. right? Absolutely. So yeah, that's uh, that's it. It's you know, it's it's the brotherhood here is is real. It's not it's not. Hey, here's a t-shirt and. Um, you know, welcome. No, that's not how it works. You have to earn that T-shirt. Awesome. So. so, what would you say to someone that's in the shoes you were in before you started? When you were starting, you were you realized that this was something you needed to become a part of, but you were having some of those doubts and fears and and hesitations. What would you say to someone that's in those shoes right now? That's that's looking at the project from the outside. So, the biggest key uh, advice that I could give is is seek being uncomfortable. If you seek being uncomfortable when you get here it will be normal because you will be uncomfortable from the moment you get here to the moment you leave. If you do your workouts that they're prescribing you and you finish and you're like, whatever, 40 minutes in, you know you got 20 minutes left. Oh man, 20 minutes and I'm done. That's not how this program works. Like after that workout, you're doing all their evolutions. So if you seek being uncomfortable, you will succeed. And not just in the project, at anything in life because you will change your mind to, I'm not just here for 60 minutes, I'm here until it's over. So mm -hmm. whether it's 75 hours, whether it's two, three years of, of a bad life, of a, you know just unforeseen circumstances that you can't control, you know you're gonna make it to the other side. Um, so just seek being uncomfortable, that's the biggest biggest advice. Awesome, and any other additional piece of advices for guys that are actually like the guys you're gonna, you're gonna be helping out with actually starting today um, and or future classes that they can any any words of wisdom or advice you have for any any future classes yeah up. man n nothing lasts forever that's the biggest thing I, i've always been taught and i really live by that um you know whether it was the six day program that i did in the fire department or it was it was the 100 mile run or this class um life is highs and lows and neither of them last you know you, you feel great like I, during that picture and two hours later, I, I wasn't smiling. <laughs> and you know, later that night, you know, I, I chuckled because you know, it, it was hard. And it, but it not, neither of it lasts. And you just need to remember that um, that pain pain is temporary. I know it's really like it's a quote that's thrown out there. Like, but it, it, it's true. It's not gonna be hard forever. So it, it will end. It's just so while everyone else is look, seeking comfort and looking for the easy way out and average and ordinary lives run towards a gunfire while everyone else is running away and that's where the real the Absolutely. real value the gold is by it's running where, towards that it's where the growth is that's where it's where the greatness is um it, it's it's really not hard to be great these days because all you have to do is is seek being uncomfortable and, and just get used to it make it part it. of life that's awesome it. stuff I want to thank you again for coming julian thank serrano you, Steve. appreciate it listen out there in the in the audience the project is all about again having meaningful transformation this is about leveling up in your family, your fitness, your finances, your faith. And there have been tons of golden nuggets dropped today, so just put in the comments down below what was the number one takeaway point you got from this video. Make sure you like and share this video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of these future videos so that you can learn how to become an even better husband, father, leader, entrepreneur, and man with The Project Show. I will talk to you next time, it's all about killing the bitch and unleashing the beast. You are freaking awesome, no excuses.